Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, design a food rating system. This is actually a pretty good problem in my opinion. There's no like fancy tricks that you need to solve it. It's just a good old fashioned problem. We basically have like a food register or food rating system and it's actually relatively simple. We are given all of the foods, including their cuisines and their respective ratings at the beginning, that's gonna be passed into the constructor. So think of it this way, we have a food and for every food we have a cuisine, which could be like, like the type of food that it is, maybe Italian or Mexican or something else. And the second thing is the rating and that is going to be a number. So like one or two or three, that is pretty simple, but there are two particular operations that we want to support. So really understanding these operations operations is going to help us understand how we can best structure our data. There's many, many ways to structure data, as you guys might know, and it's always relevant to the actual problem that we're trying to solve. So let's really understand what's going on here. The first operation is actually really simple. We want to be able to change the rating of a food. So we're given two parameters, the food itself and the new rating of the food. So, so far you might think, well, we can just have a hash map that will allow us to very easily change the rating of a food whenever we want to. So sure, we can, for every food, map it to the rating of that food. That's not hard to do, but as you can guess, it's gonna get a bit more complicated. Let's take a look at the second operation. We want to be able to return the highest rated food based on the cuisine. That's kind of interesting. So it kind of leads us to believe that we want to map the cuisine to all of the foods that belong to that cuisine. But not only that, like even if we had a list of foods belonging to every cuisine, because in this function, we're just given one parameter, the specific cuisine. So if we were able to map it to all the foods belonging to that cuisine, we still won't know which one is the highest rated. So when we do store those foods, it might be helpful for us to store them based on like a pair if you can in your language. And that's kind of why I use Python. It's very easy to do what we're going to do for the solution of this problem. But what I'm saying is we should store every food along with the rating of that food. I actually put the rating first for a very specific reason because look, they told us to return the highest rated food of a particular cuisine. So when we store these pairs, suppose we're doing it in a list. What do you think that list should look like if we want to only get the highest rated one? Probably we should sort it, right? We should sort them, but not based on the name of the food. We should probably sort them based on the rating of that food and probably in descending order because we want the highest rated ones to show up first. So this is a very, very important observation to make. I haven't exactly talked about how exactly we're going to implement this because with lists, it can get kind of annoying to do this, but actually lists will work pretty well. In our case, you could alternatively use a binary search tree if you wanted to. But the reason I'm saying that like either a binary search tree or a sorted list will work is because notice what we're doing. Remember, we're given all of the foods up front. So this whole mapping a cuisine to all the list of foods it's not going to change. The foods aren't going to like suddenly belong to a different cuisine. No, they're always going to belong. So the size of this list is not going to change. Now, don't forget, we did have that first function we're supporting. We do potentially have to change sometimes the rating of a food, but that's something that is easy to do in a list. It's not like we're removing elements from the list. We're only modifying them. That can be done relatively efficiently if the list is sorted. You might be wondering how, won't we still have to do like a linear scan to find the food? Technically, no, because with sorted lists, there is a more efficient way to deal with them. It is log n. 
And I think pretty much everything I'm saying now could also be applied to binary search trees as well. That's really the main idea of how we're going to solve this problem. Now, let me be a bit more specific and say that Python actually does not, I think, natively have binary search trees, though we can get around that with something called a sorted set, which I think is pretty much under the hood. It acts as a sorted tree, so we can do these operations pretty efficiently. And this is mainly like the intuition that I've explained so far. I think explaining like the entire time complexity will be easier with the code. And I think even explaining like the entire solution, because we're going to need a bit more than just one sorted set. I think it'll make more sense when we actually get into the code. But for now, let's just try solving the problem with one sorted set. And then it'll become obvious why we actually do need a couple more uh, hash maps. Let's get into it. So one thing on leak code, you actually do need to explicitly import the sorted set. This is how you can do that in Python. But now in this constructor, let's initialize one thing. Remember, we wanted to have a grouping of the cuisines and group the foods of every cuisine together. And we wanted to do that in a sorted set. So that actually means here we're going to have a hash map where the value of the hash map is going to be a sorted set at every single entry. So in other words, what we're going to do here, every cuisine is going to map to a sorted set of pairs which contain a rating and a food. So this is what we're doing. So that's why we have a, a different sorted set for every single cuisine because we want to group them together under the same cuisine. So now let's go ahead and just iterate over all of the foods. So we can say range length of foods. And I didn't mention this, but all three input arrays are of the same length. Each entry is considered like a group. So here we're going to have for our cuisine food grouping, we're going to take the current cuisine that we're at, at index i, that's going to be the key of this hash map, uh, cuisines at index i. A sorted set is pretty easy to work with. I think we're mainly just going to be adding and removing from it. So here we're going to add a pair. You can probably guess that that pair is going to be the current rating at index i and the current food at index i. I. Now there's one thing here. Remember we wanted to sort these in descending order. Currently it's going to sort them in ascending order based on the rating. And if there's a tie among ratings, it's going to sort them based on the food. This part is good because they do mention in the problem description, if there's a tie among ratings, we want to return the food based on the one that occurs first, like in alphabetical order. That will kind of hold. If there's a tie, they will then be sorted based on foods in alphabetical order. But we want this to be in descending order. So what we're actually going to do is something kind of clever. We're going to actually turn the ratings negative. Even though the sorted set can only contain these elements in ascending order, we've pretty much reversed the order by taking the rating and making it negative. So we've pretty much achieved what we wanted to do. These will be sorted in descending order, technically based on the original rating. Now let's actually implement this part, which is relatively easy now that we have this map. We're gonna return the highest rated food based on this cuisine. So we have our map. We're gonna say self.cuisines and the foods. And for the current cuisine that we were given, that is going to return a bunch of food. And we want to return the one that's first in that sorted set. And if you haven't worked with sorted sets before, it's relatively easy to get the first one. We can kind of treat it like a heap where we just index it and get the first element in that. So that will give us this pair that is the highest rated. So we have this pair now, like this represents a pair. What do we want to return from this function? We're returning a string, which is gonna be the name of the food, the second value in that pair. So here now we're gonna add a one. We're getting the second one in the pair and then we can just go ahead and return that. You might think we're almost done with the problem, but change rating is going to be the hardest of them all because actually replacing the value from a sorted set is not as easy as you would think. The best way to pretty much do that is to do this, is to say in this cuisine foods here, we're going to call a remove. So we're going to remove the current rating food pair, and then we're going to actually add 
the new one because with this function all we're trying to do is replace the rating and the easiest way to do that is actually just to remove the pair and then add another pair so how exactly do we do that well first of all for this food we kind of need the cuisine it belongs to like we weren't even given that in this parameter that's kind of annoying isn't it it'd be nice if we were given the cuisine but we're not so we have to fetch that ourselves how are we going to do that well rather than like searching through this entire thing looking for the food we should have probably in our constructor just created a very simple map self dot cuisines which is going to take every single food and map it to the cuisine that it belongs to because then it would have been very very easy for us to get the cuisine like this let's just call it c for short we would have just done this get from the cuisines given the current food this is the cuisine and then we'd be able to use that here and use that here so that's only possible if we initialize that within this loop so that's what i'm going to do here cuisines and I should probably rename this. Don't forget the I. That's kind of been the hardest part of this problem for me. Just trying to make sure that I'm uh, typing the word cuisine correctly. So we're mapping the food to the, the food at index I to the cuisine at index I. So far, so good. Now we need to remove the current pair. To remove, we can't just pass in one of these keys. We have to pass in the entire pair. So we have to pass in the original rating, let's call that R, and the original food. That's given to us. The food is the easy part. It's given to us, but the rating wasn't given to us either. That's kind of annoying, like the original rating wasn't given to us. Now, this add part is pretty easy to do because we're adding the new pair and we were given the new rating, of course, so we're gonna add that, it's easy. Don't forget the negative sign before the uh, rating itself and then the food. So we're adding that pair kind of like we did up here, but we can't remove the pair unless we can get the rating. Wouldn't it have been nice if we also had a rating map where we mapped every food to its original rating? That would have been pretty nice, and then we would have been able to remove it. And again, let's not forget the negative, uh, assuming that when we store the ratings, we're uh, storing the original rating, not the negative rating, which is exactly what I'm gonna do now. So here we're gonna have ratings. This is gonna map every food to the rating. Now, this part is almost complete. You might think it's 100% complete, but don't forget, if we have a ratings map, we also have to maintain that as well. So if we're changing the rating of a food, we should probably also change it in this rating map. So I'm gonna do that down here in self.ratings for the original food. We're now gonna set it to the new rating. So I believe this is the entire code. And I hope now you understand why we actually need these maps. I'm not just trying to pull them out of nowhere. I'm trying to explain uh, why we do need them. I see a couple typos though. So with our food here, I think that's actually called foods. So let's uh, correct that. And I think this over here as well. And I also realized that we forgot to actually initialize this uh, ratings map, like initialize the values in it. So down here, uh, let's make sure to do that. So with ratings for every food at index I, we want to add the rating at index I. Looks like I actually had a couple more typos. So cuisines, foods, it looks like we just need to add an S here and I think an S here. Let me go ahead and try to run the code again. And somehow I still managed to spell it wrong. So let's get rid of this S here. I do think logically the code is correct. After running it on the left, you can see that it is. I do think it's relatively efficient, even though the runtime is kind of random. And let's actually get into the efficiency of this. So first, let's start with the constructor. So we know all three of these arrays are the same size. Let's call the length of them n. So what is the time complexity of this constructor going to be? Well, we're iterating through all of them. So let's start with a big O of n. The hash map insertions are constant time, but this here, potentially, in the worst case, we might end up actually grouping all of the foods under a single cuisine. So the max size of one of the sorted sets could be n. To insert into it, we're going to use some kind of binary search insertion. The way it's implemented, I think, with a sorted set, that's actually going to be log n, even though typically with arrays, inserting in the middle of it might be like O of n in the worst case. The way the sorted set is implemented, I think it's log n. So the overall time complexity of this is going to be n log n. 
the overall time complexity of like highest rated is going to be O of log N. Or actually, I think that's going to be a constant time. I thought we were going to be searching the sorted set, but that's not the case. We are just getting the first element in the sorted set. We already know exactly where that is, so we don't have to search. So that's going to be constant time. Now, changing the rating, that I believe is going to be log N because, again, the max size of a sorted set could be O of N. And removing from it and adding to it, both of those are log n operations. So for us to do that, that is going to be the time complexity of this method. That's why this is a relatively efficient solution. It's relatively easy to code up, at least once you know how to do it. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.